Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am listening to Phil Wickham. Great things. I really like this song. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, but we are having uh, some interesting weather. Uh, we still have electricity, though, so I'm not sitting here in the dark like last time. So that's a good thing. That's a blessing. All right, so tonight we're going to talk about Forever We're Free, and uh, I think it's going to be a good discussion. I've got some scriptures. Uh, I wrote something on Facebook. But I keep getting sidetracked on other things like Gab. Oh, now I know why. I need that over there. Okay. I'm moving my camera around. Yeah, I was I was looking up some things on Gab. There we are. Now I got things side by side. Okay. All right, I got it going on now. Okay. Well, I hope you had a wonderful day today, a wonderful Monday. I did. I can't believe that it is in May already, but. Hey, the flowers, the trees, the grass. It looks like May out there. Plus, we're having interesting weather that out of nothing comes these huge thunderstorms uh, with tornado watches, which uh, tornado is not my favorite word in the vocabulary at all. But anyway, I think we're going to jump into some prayer and we're going to jump into this lesson and uh, I hope that you're not having bad weather. We'll pray about the weather and all the people that are impacted. I was looking, um, I was watching WFAA live. They've gotten to where they do live on YouTube because we don't have TV. We don't have cable. We don't have TV. We don't really want it. We don't want the shows that go with it. We mostly watch YouTube and we can watch what we want. We can watch clips um, of things that we want to watch, like way back, <laughs> way back, things that are decent, because most things right now are not decent. Um, anyway, let's jump into some prayer. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do, God. And we know that you are in control, God. Just please protect the people that are in um, in the path of this storm, God. Just please keep them safe. Be with them. Let them feel your presence. God, we just pray that there's not a whole lot of damage and that... Um, you would be with these people. We thank you because you are our creator, our provider, our protector, and our sustainer, God. And you are our shelter in the storm. You are also our strength and our refuge. God, we just pray that um, we just praise you because you are magnificent and wonderful and mighty. And you have called us to be your children, God, and we are thankful. God, we're thankful because you're compassionate and kind and long-suffering and faithful. And you keep all of your promises, God. And um, all your prophecies will be fulfilled. God, we're thankful, thankful that we are forever free through Jesus. We are thankful, God, that you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness, God, in your perfect will and your perfect timing. God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We also pray that you would soften their hearts, God. We pray for the prodigals to come home, and we pray for all disasters, God, for you to um, meet the needs of the people that are in these disasters, God. We just pray that people would be the hands and feet of Jesus. We also pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And we pray for um, 
that they would feel your presence, God, in the, in the absence of their loved one. And God, we just pray. We pray for all truth to rise above all the lies. There's so many things right now, God, and I'm not going to get into specifics, but please be with the people in Michigan tonight. Let their, um, let their message be heard loud and clear. And God, please help us to stand for the truth as your children. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So, I'm not going to go into details about that. Alright, so let's... I'll read you what I wrote this afternoon. That is the wrong song. When death was arrested. I love this song, When Death Was Arrested, uh, by North Point Inside Out, and I'm blessed to have been able to see them in concert. They're really good. Um, I even have a CD. Okay, so I really love this song and message by North Point Inside Out. I love the lyrics, especially the bridge that says, we are free, free, forever we're free. I love that part. <laughs> just makes me feel so free and when we are saved by Jesus we are free forever what an awesome comfort in this evil fallen world in salvation through Jesus we have a forever home not made by human hands but by our everlasting father death was arrested when Jesus rose out of the grave to offer us salvation and true freedom forever even so so even while we are here in this world we can still be free through Jesus but sometimes things of the world can put us in bondage. We are headed to a place of indescribable beauty and perfect freedom. Are you saved through Jesus? If not, call upon his name and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. Excuse me. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3:16 through 21 call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Alright, so that is what I wrote this afternoon about when death was arrested. Which I really like that song. I'm listening to Made in the Image of God. I love that song too. By We Are Messengers. It's awesome. I just got through listening to Who You Say I Am by Hillsong Worship. I listen to a lot of music because I do music for youth and so about Monday through Wednesday I start trying to you know uh, tap into the Holy Spirit and see what what he wants us to sing on Wednesday but I really like music anyway I like it in the background um, even though I'm speaking um, when I used to work, I would have music in the background. Now I listen to a lot of things. I listen to a lot of YouTube videos about things, but I like to listen to music at this time. It gives me peace. Okay, so what does it mean that forever we're free? Well, let's read Matthew 24. I read this every once in a while because I want people to see really how bad things are. Not as a as a downer, but just to see where we are. See where we are right now. And part of this is about the tribulation. But the thing is, we need to be ready at any moment. Jesus could come and get us at any moment. There is nothing no prophecy that has to be fulfilled right now before he comes to get us and take us to heaven okay so let's read matthew 24. And then i have a few more verses that we're going to read um, in different places Ew, i like this song too I haven't heard this song in a while I need to combine all my lists together. Okay. 
was so the coming of Christ. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? So he's telling both. He's telling the sign of his the, what is going to be happening when he comes, and the end of the world, both. Okay, that just stuck out to me. Like, I've read this, I don't know how many times, and that just stuck out. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. There are a lot of deceivers out there right now. There are a lot of scenarios that you can buy into that are not true. And so you just really have to be careful about what you believe. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Well, I've talked to you about um, the fact that Israel says that they are meeting with their Messiah. And uh, they're convinced that that is their Messiah, but Jesus says it's not, that many will come and say that they are him, but they aren't. i got to adjust this again. Part of my head's going. Maybe if I set up a little bit, I wouldn't look like a floating head. Okay, there we go. That's a little better. Okay, so, so many shall come and say that they're Christ. Okay, we've got one in Israel right now claiming that he is the Messiah. And they're convinced that he is the Messiah. But he's not. He's the false Messiah. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Okay, well, we, we massively have wars and rumors of war. We've got China versus Taiwan. We've got Russia and Ukraine. We've got Israel and Iran, and there's one more, North Korea. I think North Korea's mad at us right now, so. But there's another one, too. There's another country that's at odds with, oh, well, I don't, there's like four. Anyway, war could just, like, happen anytime. There's rumors of wars, and there are, like, Israel and Iran, they're, you know, shooting rockets back and forth. So it's ramping up. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. That's exactly what we have going on. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Well, there are famines in places. Maybe not here in America or in Texas, but there are famines in places. Um, and pestilences. Well, our latest disease is a pestilence. And earthquakes, tons of earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Well, that's exactly what happened to his apostles. They were all killed. They were all delivered up and killed. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Well, that is exactly where we are right now. We are there right now. There is so much hate out there. Um, 
and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Well, we have false prophets out there, just like their false messiah that they're saying is their messiah. It's just not true, and that's what Jesus said, that, you know, don't believe that. Do not be deceived. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we just have to be strong and courageous and stay on this Christianity journey. Keep praying. Keep um, worshiping. Keep learning in God's word. That's what we need to do. And keep sharing the gospel. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, I don't know whether the gospel has gone out to all nations. But you know what? Through the internet, it's gone out to a lot. When they therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Okay, so that's going to be the Antichrist declaring that he is God. And that is going to be the abomination of desolation. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So our flight he talking about the rapture or is he talking about them fleeing you know I guess it could be either one but we need to you know they need to make sure it's not in the winter or on the Sabbath day for then shall be great tribulation because as soon as the rapture the tribulation starts the tribulation clock starts after the rapture so maybe he is talking about the rapture. I don't know. Uh, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Okay, um, it's thundering outside. So, I'm not going to listen to music right now through that earbud anyway. Okay, so where are we? Alright. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. Well, I think that means that we're not going to be here to be deceived by the Antichrist. We are not going to have to choose the mark of the beast. We're already going to be in heaven. That's going to be something that happens in the tribulation. I don't believe that um, what they want to give everybody is the mark of the beast. But I think it's leading up to it. It is, I think they're testing the waters to see if people are willing to maybe put a chip in the hand or in the forehead whether people are willing to put everything in one chip or not. I think that's the mark of the beast. Okay. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. So the rabbis in Israel are convinced that they are talking to their Messiah. Jesus says no. Jesus says no. Do not believe it. Do not believe it. For there shall arise 
Okay, wait, wait, wait. I lost my place. Sorry. Um, before I have told you, behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they sh shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Oh, where's Israel? It's in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. He's been in the secret chambers. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even into the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Um, he's coming in the clouds and everyone will see. Everyone will see. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. So after the tribulation, the tribulation lasts seven years. So after the tribulation, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in the clouds. In heaven. In heaven, sorry. Not in, in the clouds. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming. In the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Well, I believe this is talking about when he comes back on the white horses. And we're supposed to be coming with him with angels. I'm not a horse rider, but I trust Jesus, so I'm willing. And he shall send his angels with a great, great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now I believe that this, these are the people that are saved during the tribulation. There will be people saved during the tribulation, um, but they'll be in hiding. And when caught, they'll they'll be killed, just like you said. People will betray one another. Uh, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth new leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Well, it's summer. I'm ready to fly out of here. Uh, so likewise, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, 
and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth Whew, that's a lot right there that is a lot to unpack I believe sometimes Jesus is speaking of the rapture here and sometimes he's speaking of the tribulation and wants to follow the tribulation but everything that he lists here that are the beginning of sorrows we're having a lot of those beginning of sorrows and they are coming very close together and very intense just like a woman that is in labor and uh, so once the uh, pains get so close together and so more and more intense then there's the delivery well Jesus is our deliverer so Jesus will come and deliver his people to heaven okay so I just felt led to read that so let's move on to forever we're free. So Galatians 5.1 says this. Sounds like our thunderstorms have moved on. I am so thankful. So let's read, let's read 1 through 13, and I'm going to see if I can get my music back now, because it was really good. Oh we are. I was listening to One Thing Remains. Jesus culture. I really like that song. Okay, so the liberty of the gospel. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Jesus is the one that has given us this forever freedom. We did not attain it on our own. Um, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So sin is bondage. I know I was looking at a video today and it was this certain subject that I'm not going to say on here, but they were asking if it was sin. Well, all they have to do is pick up the Bible and it is clearly sin. Okay. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. So what, is, what he is saying is many of the Jews wanted to follow God's law. They didn't want to follow the new covenant with God through Jesus which is a grace covenant and so they wanted to continue following the law all the law all of the law that God told them probably even sacrifices you know of animals I'm thinking but Jesus was that last blood sacrifice and we are not required to do that anymore that is something else that they want to start doing in Israel. So it's like history is repeating itself. Christ is become, okay, and ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you, that ye should not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, 
but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. So someone was leading them astray. I don't know who. He really doesn't say. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, which is freedom. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but our freedom is not an excuse for sin. But by love serve one another, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even this, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay, well this is going to get down to, I'm just going to read all of this. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law, nor the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, this very clearly mentions a lot of sin. And if we are stuck in our sin, and we have not accepted Jesus as our Savior, and accepted the grace and the freedom that he has to offer, then we will not inherit the kingdom of God. We will not be forever free in heaven or here. We won't be. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. I'm going to do it the way I have it memorized. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I might have let, left one out. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Oh, that's right. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay. Um, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections in lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. And so if we want to be free, we need to come out of our sin. We need to not live according to the old laws in the Old Testament. Now I have a theory of what Jesus was saying when he said love God and love others because if you love God you're not going to do the things in the Ten Commandments. You're not going to break the Ten Commandments. You're going to be able to keep them if you love God and if you love others because part of the Ten Commandments is about loving God and the other part of the Ten Commandments is about loving God others. So I think, I believe that's what he was saying. Not that you can murder, not that you can do the things that are in the Ten Commandments, but you don't have to do the blood sacrifices anymore. You don't have to do the other things by the law that they had to do. Okay, so let's move on to John 8.32, which I really like this verse too. I'm listening to Reckless Love, which our youth love Reckless Love, but can't do Reckless Love every week. 
We do it a lot though. We do it at least twice a month. Okay, 832. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And right above that, if you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. So, knowing the truth, which is Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, John 14, 6, I believe. I'm learning some scripture. By doing this little study every night and every morning, I'm learning some scripture. Like what it is and where it is. Okay. So that was John 8.32. I like this song too. His mercy is more... I wish I could find a girl singing this, though, because it's really low. Okay, sorry. I digress. Okay, let's go to Romans 8, 1 through 4. I don't remember what that was. I, I got my list, but then also I got... Um, I got some other things too. I got some other verses in my phone. Okay, eight, one through four. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. We just talked about that. Not walking after the flesh, not being in those sins of the flesh, after the spirit, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, that's so good. That's so good. Because Jesus sets us free. I'll have to decline my daughter's call. I hate to do that, but I'm doing I'm doing this. Okay. Psalm forty nine nine. I'll call her as soon as I get done with this. nine says that he should still live forever and not see corruption. Wait. 49.9 hmm. I don't know what that has to do with it. Alright, well let me, let me read it in context then. Hear this, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my, my dark, saying upon the harp, Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them by none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him, for the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceaseth forever, that he should still live forever and not see corruption, for he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool 
and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Wow. No, nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. This their way is their folly. Yet their, pros, their posterity approve their saying, Selah. Like sheep they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. <clears throat> and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling but God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave and he shall receive me be not thou afraid when one is made rich when the glory of his house is increased for when he dieth he shall carry nothing away his glory shall not descend after him Though while he lived, he blessed his soul, and men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. A man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. Wow, so we're not taking anything with us. And these rich people that, I mean, this is their treasure. Um... It's not going to save their soul. You know, only Jesus can do that. You know, we can't buy our salvation. Our God cannot be bought. Our God cannot be threatened. Our God cannot be uh, compromised. Like the judges that we have on this earth, they can be bought, they can be compromised, and they can be threatened. But our God that sees and hears all cannot be and nothing will be hidden from him not anything so let's go to first peter i don't you know sometimes the scriptures that they put just really don't go so maybe it's for somebody out there that needs to hear it i don't know oh i like this song called ghost by mercy me. Okay, so first Peter two sixteen. Well I'm gonna read fifteen. For so is the will of God that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness but as the servants of god honor all men love the brotherhood fear god honor the king servants be subject to your masters with all fear not only to the good and gentle but also to the froward for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward god endure grief suffering wrongfully So our freedom is not to be used for maliciousness. Like we don't use our freedom and say, well, because I am free, I can stay in this sin because I know that I'm going to heaven and my salvation is going to get me to heaven. Well, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take our freedom and try to further the kingdom of God. Okay, so let's read the very best that I left for last because that's what I do. I'm going to see if there's anything in here. This is an older Bible, so it has it has an appendix that is sometimes pretty good, and then sometimes the word's not even in there. Free. Truth make you free. I think it's mostly what I read. Oh, wow. That is... Wow. Okay. My daughter's sending me messages now. Sorry.
Okay. All right. So let's read the best. Revelation 22. And we read it the other day, too, but it is just so good. And uh, let me see what I want to read. 22, 5. We'll start with 22.1. I just love this description. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. I'm sorry, I need some water. Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. That was kind of a strange sensation on that side. Um, might have, we've got some more thunder and lightning going. Um, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse. You know, I believe at this time the curse that we're under, we're under a curse from Adam and Eve, um, there won't be a curse anymore. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be. I was going to see if it said anything about freedom in here. Because we actually read this last night. Blessed are they, I skipped to 14, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Uh, 17, and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that hear, heareth say come let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him that take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. I don't want the plagues written in this book. I do not. So I'm not adding anything to this book. God shall take away his part from the book of life. And if any man shall take away, okay, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So we don't want to, we don't want to put no, <laughs> we don't want to put any words in the mouth of God uh, or add to his word. I sure don't want my name taken out of the book of life because I'm looking forward for to that forever freedom um, so that is where our forever freedom lasts forever we're free in Jesus if we have Jesus as our Savior forever we are free so let me go over this from today See how long it is. Oh, it's not very long. Enough. So here are my notes from today. And good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus, a new day to make better choices and to work for me, a new beautiful day, child. Thank you. And I said thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings of new opportunities to share your truth and the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for a new day to make better choices, which I did make better choices. I did really good on my food choices today. And that's what I'm working on, food choices and uh, exercise. 
Okay, thank you for a new beautiful day, God. And he said, child, much truth is being revealed quickly. It really is. You're probably not seeing it on the news, but much truth is being revealed quickly. Much is trying to be hidden also, but you know the truth always surfaces. Child, so so much is taking place and soon all will be out in the open in your country. The evil goes deep and started many, many years ago through many government levels. The things done to follow the evil one, many will not believe, but it happens every day. I have led you to the message of truth that follow my teacher, my teachings also. Follow only those few that talk about Jesus being their Savior and not others. Let the Holy Spirit help you narrow it down to five. So I've, I follow a lot of people on YouTube. I've got to narrow it down to five. Um, otherwise, it becomes confusion. And do not focus on these five all day. And I didn't. I, I didn't hardly listen to anything today. I don't know what I did, but I got things done. Okay, God, I will narrow my people down that I follow and make sure that they belong to you. Thank you for pointing that out to me. And he said, expand your ministry, child, in other areas also. Work on growing your channels for my glory. Your song yesterday made me smile, inviting your audience to sing, whether it was out of sync, came from the, came from the heart in all of my children, singing about Jesus made me happy. Heaven rejoiced, and we know that many imagine what it is like here. Colton was has great recollections. That's the little boy, Colton Burpo. I've actually been listening to a lot of him and his dad talk lately. Um, reread his recollections, child, so I gotta reread that book. Um, I'm opening doors for you because of your obedience, child. They will require you to leave your house and travel some. You need a set schedule to maintain also. Thank you, God, for opportunities to help further your kingdom. Help me to prepare for what I need. He said, child, you have much of what you need in your house. Find it and be ready for the opportunities that come up. He said, thank you, God, for your faithfulness to meet me every day and for ordering my steps also. God, help me to keep moving today. Help me to further your kingdom, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. And he said, I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to all that I ask. The reunion is soon, and Jesus is coming to get his bride right before the destruction to come. Be ready, child, and keep walking with Jesus. All will come to pass, but will then but until then remember your assignment. The reunion will be beautiful, so be ready. And I said Maranatha God. Says, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Because this place is getting pretty crazy. Okay, so how can we do our salvation tonight? Our bracelet's on the floor. Hmm. I'm trying to find something that fits. Okay. We'll do it like this tonight. I need to get off of here tonight so I can go talk to my daughter. Okay, so this is a free million dollar bill, but it is absolutely not real. But look at it. It looks real. It looks real. I was given one of these and then I ordered some more, so I have a bunch now. I found like, um, I found a bunch. I was looking, I have like stacks of them now. So I want to start. I want to start doing something. If people will put their names in the comment, I want to start 
um, sending them, you know, something. Maybe one of these or maybe a bracelet if you're a girl. Probably not if you're a guy. Okay, so anyway, you see the Ben Franklin. You see there's uh, serial numbers on both sides. Um, United States of America. It would be great if these were real, but they're absolutely not. In God We Trust on the back. I wonder when that's going to start showing up and not being on our money. Okay, well that's another story. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you. This is livingwaters.com, Ray Comfort, that did this. So I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to get off of here. Okay, so here is the million-dollar question. Will you go to heaven when you die? Here is a quick test. Have you ever lied, stolen, or used God's name in vain? Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If you have done these things, God sees you as a lying, thieving, blasphemous adulterer at heart. And the Bible warns that one day God will punish you in a terrible place called hell. But God is not willing that any should perish. Sinners broke God's law and Jesus paid their fine. This means that God can legally dismiss their case. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Then Jesus rose from the dead, defeating death. Today repent and trust Jesus, and God will give you eternal life as a free, free, as a free gift, and you will forever be free. Then read the Bible daily and obey it. God will never fail you. He won't. This will because it's not real. But God will never fail you. And Jesus won't either. So if... Uh, just if you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, in your own words, ask Jesus for forgiveness. Tell Jesus that you want Him to be the Lord of your life. And you want Him to be your Savior forever. And start seeking the kingdom of God. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to have for us to forever be free. It's pretty easy. Okay, well, I'm going to get off of here because I need to call my daughter and talk to her about what she sent me a message about. So I'm going to do a very quick prayer, and I'm going to get off of here. We have storms around us anyway. I need to be a meteorologist. I'm the, I am the family meteorologist, and so I need to go look at the storms that are coming. Not that I can do anything. God is in control, but hey, I'd like to know if I need to get in a safer spot in my house, or we have a shelter out there we can get in. Okay, well, let's, um, let's pray. And God, we just thank you. We thank you that you sent Jesus so that we can forever be free through salvation in him. And that it is a free gift, God. That we don't have to pay anything for it. That Jesus paid a tremendous price with his precious blood. And we just pray, God, that you would help us to draw closer and closer to Jesus every day and that you would just be with us. I pray for my friends. I pray for their families. I pray that you would protect them and provide for them and bless them, God, that you would protect people from the storms tonight as they move up to the east and to the north, God, that you would be with these people, that you would continue to protect us, God, that you would help us also be protected. And uh, we just pray, God, that you would also just uh, continue to 
bring the truth of all things to the surface, God. We just pray for all truth to surface above all lies, God. I pray for my daughter and her family, God. I just pray for your peace. And I just pray that you would be with them. And uh, I pray that you would bless anyone that comes and watches this, God. That you would just, if they are not saved, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they would be saved. And that maybe there's a message in here for them that came from the Holy Spirit. And I just pray that you would uh, direct our paths. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, pray and share, warriors. I'm going to get off of here. I haven't been on here for quite an hour. So let me give you uh, God's blessing to leave you with. Number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Peace forever. We need peace. Okay, well, much love. Much love and cyber hugs. Till I see you again, good night.